So let's come back to this slide. Okay, next would be the layer 3, which is a network layer. So on network layer, we will perform various functions that is related to routing. Most probably the routing tables and those things, uh, the fastest path algorithm should be part of this layer. This is for the routing part. And um, the various routing protocols will work on this layer, the network layer. Next we will see transport layer. On the transport layer, layer 4, we will have the end-to-end -end error control and also flow control. But the flow control depends on what protocol is at the transport layer. If we have TCP, then we will have flow control. But if we have UDP, then there will be no flow control. So that's what about the transport layer. These are the three layers where the network engineers would mostly work on. That is the transport layer, network layer and data link layer and also the physical layer you can say. So most, most of the work of the network engineers would be on these four layers. And the upper three layers are more part of the application, application developers and application uh, handlers. So on the upper upper layers, we'll take care of the authentications, encryptions, decryptions, uh, compression, session restoration, and uh, other higher le higher level application functions. So now, uh, as we move, uh, as we saw the seven layers and their functions, the how do the communication and how do the data flows from each layer to the next layer that we will see in this in this slide. So from every layer to every other layer, there will be a, a encapsulation. Okay. So uh, encaps encapsulation would be taking place. Like for example, let's show it here. Okay. So if you see the first the first stream. In the data stream which is a protocol to the data unit that has that is sent by the application this protocol data unit will be handed over to the layer below that is the application layer and a header is added you can see here that application header has been added on this part on the original data so now this as a whole becomes data for the next layer the application layer header was added and this has a whole, it is application and the data becomes the data for the next layer. So a new header is added for the presentation layer again. And this data that I am referring to, referring to is ideally called as protocol data unit. So this protocol data unit will keep or adding headers. I mean headers will be added to the protocol data units as data is passed from top to down on the OSI layer model. So as we pass process data from top to bottom, at every layer, a new encapsulation will be added. So this is what we are seeing here. New encapsulation, uh, new headers and trailers are added. The trailer is added at the data link layer. And at all the other layers, headers are added. Header and trailer both, both are added. Finally, the data is transmitted for the physical stream. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so, what are these en encapsulations, and how do we study them? That we'll see in the later part. So, our our, our scope of work, our our encapsulation scope would be on this section on this part so transport layer what header is added maybe TCP maybe UDP that we will see at the network layer what header is added maybe IP IP header or OSPF header EIGRP header at the data link layer what header is added maybe IEEE 802.3 Ethernet header and finally transmitted on the physical layer so at each layer here we are adding 
some information that's in the form of headers so that we'll see what are the informations added in these layers that we'll see later but first we'll see the high level overview of it <coughs> now packet forwarding so uh, till now we saw the OSI layer I mean yeah, the functions of the OSI layer and the encapsulation process how data or overhead is added to the protocol data unit at each and every step next what we'll see is from a practical perspective how does uh, the OSI layer come into picture when packet is being forwarded from one system to the other so for this let's say the forwarding packet from PC1 switch physical data switch in the network Okay, so let me take this time now. Now let's, uh, we will discuss the communication from say PC1 and I had till another, another host in another, another domain, say router one, and we have and down to another host for example a host is connected so from PC1 to this host we will discuss the communication let's go back to So the first thing that we are seeing is end system will initiate, uh, the application will initiate data. It will send downwards through the presentation layer to the physical and at every step error will be added as explained earlier. So now we are at the physical, uh, at the first element. So for the first element in our case is PC2, PC1 sorry. So we are at PC1 and PC1 has generated data to be sent to Edge, host edge. So the first hop at the first hop, this is the physical layer that they are talking about. This is the physical layer that we are talking about in this slide. So the physical layer, why the physical layer? It's receiving to some bridge or switch. So it's a layer two device. So why the physical layer? This packet is traveling to either a bridge or a switch. So the, the, the packet is traveling up to the switch say it's layer 2 so till now we are having it as a layer 2 <coughs> okay now when the switch has received the packet it will open the packet and the switch will check the destination map so destination map as I told you earlier it's part of the layer 2 map it's part of layer 2 so the switch will check destination map and it will check whether it's destined to itself first thing so whether the destination bank belongs to me if yes I will open the packet if not I will not I will just re rewrite the frame rewrite the source map destination map and forward it to the next next hop from where the destination map was launched so in this case what was important was the switch checked the source map and the destination map so if destination map belong to me then i will open it otherwise i will forward it so in this case destination map does not belong to me so the switch will 
further forward the uh, frame after doing a rewrite to the router because the PC1 has sent this packet to the router's interface that is this interface which was configured as default gateway or whatever so the, uh, the switch will rewrite the packet it will change the source field to this it will change the source field to this and the destination MAC will be the MAC address of the router interface and again send the packet forward so that's what we are seeing here at the data link the packet is the frame is open only up till the data link layer the frame the source MAC and destination MAC is rewritten source MAC with itself and destination MAC in the next hop and again the, uh, the frame is forwarded to the next element so now who is the next element as we can see it's the router so now the router will open the packet till layer 3 that is till the network layer how it functions let's see here the switch what did the switch check in the cam table or the MAC table it checked the source MAC uh, I mean the destination MAC what this? So it checked the destination MAC and based on that whether it belongs to me or not it decided whether to forward it or terminate it on itself so since the destination MAC was does not belong to me it belongs to some other router interface or router port I, I have forwarded it there so the switch forwarded the packet to the next hop Now the router has received it. What the router will do is router will perform a layer 3 lookup on this on the destination IP address in the IP header. So the packet that we have received here this will be treated as a layer 3 by the router. It will perform a layer 3 lookup in the routing table and depending on the population of the routing table it will find a route for that particular destination IP and send it ahead to the next hub the next hub in this case would be then another router maybe uh, maybe we have a band link between two locations so this is another router so if we see here we have reached in the router and now the router has sent it to another router okay so there will be one more layer of uh, routing here in our case we have another router so there will be one more layer routing layer here that router will also perform the same layer 3 lookup which we explained for this one this layer 3 lookup and ultimately this router will then forward it to the last layer this router will then forward it to the host this last forwarding will have all the decapsulations so what do I mean by that is when this router receives a packet this is the last router in the hub which is this one shown here it will forward it to the end system when the end system receives the packet the packet will be decapsulated throughout to the layer 7 the application layer so what does the elements check is uh, first they check whether the destination MAC belongs to me yes then I'll open it up further I'll open up the layer 3 header in the layer 3 header whether the destination IP belongs to me yes that belongs to me okay I'll pass it on to the next layer that is transport layer for example say it's TCB port 21 so I'll pass it on to the transport layer I mean the yes the TCP the transport layer and the transport layer will check uh, the next the details of the next layer that is port 21 and correspondingly it will handle the packet to the session layer at session layer port 21 session will be maintained and that is why they have shown end to end sessions uh, between the session presentation application and transport layer so this is these are called end to end layers end to end communication would be happening between them on the other hand on the first three layers that we saw it was hop by hop communication it was not end to end at every hop it depends whether the packet is destined to me or not depending upon that it will either be decapsulated up till layer 2 or maybe decapsulated up till layer 3 and forwarded again only at the end element it will be 
decapsulated above the transport layer. This is how the OSI model looks when we explore the communication. We see one to switch, switch performs a layer to lookup. So hence opens layer to lookup up to only data link. Next is router. Next is router. So router performs layer 3 lookup. So hence one more layer ahead that is next layer network layer. At network layer it finds the routing address, I mean the destination IP address and routes it to the appropriate exit interface. Goes to next router and from next router to the host. So at the host all the decapsulations that is above the transport layer will take place. This is uh, what the overall OSI layer is and that's what we have discussed just now. The functions, the encapsulation and decapsulation process and the packet forwarding in the actual scenario. How the OSI layer will look when we explore the packet forwarding. This is how it is.